Now, back to more of Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater and your host, Lisa Condit. Thank you for listening to Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater. This is Lisa Condit, and I am so excited to be on the phone today with Boz Skaggs. Welcome to the program, Boz. Thanks, Lisa. Nice to be here. Well, we are looking forward to having you on stage at the Hanover Theater Monday, April 8th. That's at 7.30 p.m., and what do you think? Well, I start rehearsing uh, in a few weeks. I'll. Um, this is the first leg of my tour. That'll go on into uh, spring and uh, and summer at this point. That's pretty exciting. How many stops do you have? Gosh, Lisa, I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> there, the first leg is four months, and then I have about a three week break, and then uh, it looks like we'll start. We'll go from uh, June the eighth. Uh, on into the summer, and it's hard to say. They, they're really booking August, September dates now, so I don't know. But it's, it's a, we average four to five cities a week, and uh, we stay out anywhere from six or seven weeks at a time. So um, I don't know. Well, you, it sounds <laughs> like a few shows. <laughs> it sounds like you're doing what you're told, which is always a good thing, right? You just bring the music? Well, I'm not so good at doing what I'm told, <laughs> to be quite frank and honest with you. But generally, I agree with uh, these things, and uh, this is what I like to do. So uh, I have a good relationship with my management and my booking agency, and uh, they uh, we, we look at all these things pretty carefully before we accept the dates, and... Um, but it goes well, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to a good year. We're excited to have you here. As I was telling you before, we are a fairly new theater. We are one of those um, historical re- historic renovation restoration projects where we had our grand opening about five years ago, and we're thrilled that the talent, including yourself, it just keeps getting better and better. And you've been doing this for a while. You know, you have a real trademark sound to you. Um, what what are some of the motivations for your songs and music? What are what are some of the things that people can expect to hear from you when they see you on stage? Well, I do. Uh, uh, this year, this tour will be sort of a a mixed uh, a mixed bag. I do some uh, some things from my new album, uh, which is coming out in March, and uh, so I'm pretty excited to to play that. And uh, I always do um, a handful of songs that people sort of know me by, things that were hits on the radio uh, in years past. (laughs) And um, on this particular tour, uh, I'm doing, I'm playing a number of performing arts centers. And in these theaters with comfortable seating and beautiful acoustics, I like to do some different things. I've recorded uh, a few sort of, let's call them uh, jazz vocal albums. And uh, there's some songs which I've done, which I take from various sources, various of my own albums and even other places that might feature uh, more uh, acoustic-oriented music, uh, upright bass and acoustic guitars, things that I can't really... um, that I can do better uh, in these, you know, beautiful theaters than than like in the outdoor summer venues and so forth. Absolutely. Uh, so we kind of mix it up depending on on the crowd. Sometimes I'm in a place where I've been before; people are more familiar with me, and I can uh, stretch out a little more. And then there are other places which uh, I, I feel like people aren't so aware of what I do. So I do a little more uh, things that they might be familiar with, but I haven't. It'll be day by day thing. I'll sort of suss it out uh, as I see the the theater and get a sense of what what the crowd is on a given night. What are some of your favorites that you like to play? Well, there are a couple of songs that um, that were popular. On our, I had a, an enormous album in the '70s called Silk Degrees. Number there are two songs on that that really um, resonate with me that I just feel are are um, they fit me like a glove. There's a, the, the song "Low Down." Oh yeah. 
Uh, is one. There's a song uh, Rita Coolidge had a hit on called We're All Alone, which I like to play. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some things off an album that I did about 10 years ago uh, that um, a lot of people aren't familiar with that I like to play, uh, just because I think it's just it it's part of uh, it's some of the most uh, well, for lack of a better word, sort of mature work that I've done. And uh, there's some kind of bluesy things that I, I like to do because that's sort of my first love. Um, it's really kind of all over the map uh, with me, but I try to, you know, put it in, in focus with a the great band that I have, and um, I, I think people will um, appreciate my, the musicians in my band as much as, as much as anything. It's a real live great band, and... Uh, and have you, you know, known seem, have you know, known some of those band members for a while, or are they all new? No, this is a band that I have been working with. Some some of whom I've been working with for a dozen years. Uh, I have a new drummer. I have um, oh, a keyboard player. Well, it's kind of a mixed bag. There's a, a brand new drummer and several others who've been with me six or seven years, and others who've been with me a dozen years or so. Hmm. So, um, no, it's uh, it's old and new. I love it. Well, you know, you have uh, you've you've earned a lot of respect through a wide spectrum of different American roots music. <laughs> you won a Grammy. What was that like? Considering we just celebrated or or watched the Grammys, do you go back? Well, um, on the uh, night that the Grammys were awarded that year. And that I won, I was actually doing a um, a radio promotion show in uh, in Dallas, and um, it, there were several other you know acts on the on the on the show. And uh, uh, as I was introduced to come out and play, the uh, the moderator of the the MC of the show said, uh, "And by the way, you just won the Grammy for the best uh, R&B song of the year." and um, Presented, uh, sort of presented me a facsimile of the the award. Um, so you know that's pretty exciting. I'll uh, say. At, at a time, but you know I was working and out on the road and doing what I like to do, and getting my presentation at the same time. So uh, kind of the best of both worlds. Absolutely. Do you find yourself watching the Grammys every year, or is it just an award show that occasionally you'll no, tune I, I, into. No, I watch it. Uh, I tend to um, skip the commercials. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I'm always fascinated by by the Grammys, of course. You know, I like to see who's doing what and who's coming up. And and uh, I had some um, I had some good friends uh, who are clo- her personal friends of my my son and. Uh, his family in, in Nashville, the Black Keys. Hmm. Um, the drummer Patrick is a is a a good young friend and, and a best friend of my son. So I was really happy to see the Black Keys come through last night. Isn't that cool? Well, you sound That's like great. you sound like one cool guy. You know, you're very calm. You're talking to this girl from Massachusetts. I probably talk about five hundred times faster than you do. What's it been like? traveling around the world, traveling around the country, playing your music. You say it's your favorite thing to do, and I can definitely hear that coming through from you. I've traveled and moved around quite a bit. I guess there's a, something of a, a restless spirit in me. Um, after I left high school in uh, Texas, I started, well, I graduated from high school on a Thursday night and left Texas on Friday morning and sort of have been moving quite a bit since then. I didn't take well to college. I just figured out early on that I was a musician and sort of chased that dream around from the time that I was about 17 years old. And um, I, at that time, I traveled. Uh, I spent about three years traveling uh, around Europe and, and Middle East and, and Asia and came back to the States to play music in, uh, in California after that. And um, it was my first time in the studio and my first I got my my first recording contract and uh, went on the road and worked sort of nonstop uh, for oh, a dozen years 
building up my band and uh, uh, making records and uh, touring, and um, that led to uh, uh, a lot of success for me. And um, there were a few times in my career when I sort of settled in for a while, but but mostly I like the balance of, of recording and and, uh, and traveling uh, for concerts. Hmm. So um, that sort of satisfies my my wander lust and uh, and my work at the same time. So it's a pretty good balance, and I like to see new places. I think it keeps me uh, it's stimulating and sort of piques my imagination, which is not bad for songwriting. Oh, it sounds like a wonderful life. It really does. Are there things that you've noticed that have changed drastically or dramatically from when you were starting out to now? Well, the biggest thing is the business itself. You know, mm-hmm. the the music industry was was quite different. But that's not so surprising. It goes through big changes, you know, even before I got in. It it uh it was a different thing as thing, but um, you know, I don't really know what it would be like to be starting out uh, as a musician now. It's a it's a different different industry, different different way of uh, exposing what you do. But the same the same things go on. I mean, basically, if if someone is a, an aspiring musician or artist of any kind, you just uh, try to. Uh, perfect what you do and and find an audience wherever you can find it and in many cases you you just want to expand you want to get it, it by by getting a greater audience you get more facility to do uh what you want to do with your art mm-hmm. um, you become you, you you find your voice and you find your footing and and uh once one step leads to the next and you know what as you're talking, I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, so just what I remember in listening to music on different radio stations, and then, of course, the 8-track tapes, then the tapes, then the records and CDs and downloading things on online. The truth is, is nothing ever replaces the connection of seeing a performance live. Nothing will ever replace that. You know, we can play songs over and over again in our cars, our homes, but there is that exhilaration and that thrill for both, I think, the performer and the audience when it's a live concert. And I think that that is one of those enduring qualities for performers and audiences, and hopefully theaters as well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I think uh, you're right. And and I feel fortunate to have grown up in a generation of uh, where live performances were were, were key. You know, I, I came up through... Uh, my first through the, the San Francisco in the late '60s, and live shows were in the park and in theaters and clubs and and, and so forth were really people's first contact to to a great extent with with new music. Mm-hmm. And that audience and that time, uh, it was just uh, really important and and common for people to go out and see see live music and uh you know that's been an important part of uh my generation of musicians we still go out and play to a lot of people because our generation was was one Mm -hmm. that uh really in which live music was a vital part now the same thing is true today of uh, of a generation my son is young uh early 30s and he and his generation have been going out and seeing live music. They go to clubs. They go to uh, uh, big concert uh, festivals, and and there's a lot of music available to them. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, I think music is as healthy as ever for that for that reason. And live is you know there's nothing like it. There's uh, nothing like it. It's true. You know, I have to ask you. I I know that you were a guitarist with the Steve Miller band too, right? When I was uh, playing with Steve, it was it was called the Steve Miller Blues Band, and uh, I was with Steve for uh, oh eight or ten months. I made a couple of records, and and we toured quite a bit. So, is there anything that you, else you want to share with our listeners as they're thinking about you know the show 
you talked a little bit about you like to mix the old with the new. You have a new album coming out. We're looking forward to that. Anything else you want to share? Uh, not really. I mean, that kind of says it all. That's it's what I do, and I'm I'm glad to be back in your part of the country. You know, that's kind of where I cut my teeth when I when I started out uh, my first band. It uh, I was very much or to a great degree sustained by you know all the colleges and universities and all the music that, venues that there are in the um, in the Northeast, and uh, so it's kind of a favorite place of mine to come back and play. It's, to some extent where I started and I always feel comfortable well, back in uh, Massachusetts. We are thrilled to have you and I know that all of your acoustic work and it's going to sound amazing in our theater and people are in for a real treat you know, when they come out and hear you on Monday, April 8th. So, Boz, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and everybody stay tuned. We'll be back with more behind the scenes at the Hanover Theater.